Welcome everyone to the home of finding sweet chocolate easter eggs within our video games. Well okay, perhaps not chocolate ones, but it's as good as having and finding the real thing, but just on a different level, as this is the Easter Egg Hunter. So for this third instalment, I've gone and dug out one of my all-time favourite Mario games, Super Mario Sunshine, which was released onto Nintendo's GameCube and was released in Japan in July in 2002, making this game nearly 10 years old to date. But no matter how old this game is, it's still just as fun to pick up and play even today, and our plucky plumber is taking a wonderful tropical vacation to Isle de Fino. However, little does he know that the entire island has been plastered in graffiti, thanks to a certain culprit and our Mario has been blamed for all the mess and it's up to him to clean it all up and amongst all the polluted rubbish I'm going to show you some of those Easter eggs. Number 1 Before Nintendo released their 6th generation console onto the market during 2002, which of course we all know as a Nintendo GameCube, the original codename for this compact cube was actually Dolphin, and which was actually first announced at the E3 press conference back in 1999, and evidence of this can be seen on the underneath of all GameCubes, as the codename Dolphin has been abbreviated as DOL, so why not take a look. So what has this got to do with Super Mario Sunshine, well actually it would seem quite quite a lot as Nintendo have placed dolphin references all over the island and throughout this game and for a start why not take Isle de Fino which from Italian to English would be translated as Dolphin Island which of course is why the whole island is shaped like a dolphin and it doesn't end there as there are several dolphin statues surrounding the plaza dolphin symbols on doors and there is even a hotel in Serena Beach called Hotel Delfino and you can even see a graffiti dolphin splattered on a cliff face in Noki Bay. Number 2 While exploring Serena Beach, if you happen to jump up to the middle part of the hotel and perch yourself onto one of the torch stands and then glance down at your surrounding area, you might not notice at first glance but everything in front of you has been positioned in such a way that it forms a Nintendo GameCube controller. And the grass below you to the left is the left hand grip and if you pan right, the first beach pergola represents the directional pad and the palm tree surrounded by water in the distance is the analog stick. Where you see the flame within the central position, well this is the start button and the beach chairs in the distance are where Nintendo GameCube would be written upon the controller. On the far right the second pergola is where the C control stick would be and finally the A, Y, X and B buttons are all represented with bodies of water in their typical shapes. Number 3 Within Super Mario Sunshine not only are there references to the dolphin but there are also references to many of Mario's past classic games which are referenced in some way or another and within the first few minutes of the games three different Mario games are shown and all thanks to the water device you are teamed up with known as Flood as when he scans Mario to identify him you can see in the bottom left hand corner Mario on the bridge approaching Bowser from Super Mario Brothers you can also see Mario battling Iggy Cooper from Super Mario World and finally you see Mario swinging Bowser around within Super Mario 64. There are also 8-bit Mario scrolling from Super Mario Brothers within the second episode on Serena Beach and when it comes to entering Noki Bay you have to look up at the sunlight which is an extremely similar technique used when entering the tower of the wing cap in Super Mario 64. And finally the last reference I want to share is located in episode 3 the mysterious hotel upon Serena Beach and as you hunt for the hidden shine sprite which takes you through secret trapdoors and many many puzzles an employee is sweeping up within the maze segment and so happens to say this yes that's right he's referring to Luigi from Luigi's Mansion Number 4 One of the most intriguing easter eggs within Super Mario Sunshine is located in the Noki Bay stages and in order to see it you need to have unlocked episode 3 red coins in a bottle and instead of collecting those red coins that are dotted about the level why not head down to the structure at the bottom and where the red coin is perched on a square block you will see two rectangular openings well if you enter the one on the right by floating in you will come to what would seem to be a wooden door which sadly cannot 
not be opened, but if you switch to the zoomed in mode by pressing Y and then panning your camera around to the left and then tilt it down so it glitches and enables you to see through the walls and ceiling, there on the floor is a book. Now apparently within the Japanese version of the game there is a level which requires you to fetch the book, however for some reason or another they removed this level from the PAL and NTSC versions and then left it there rather than removing it, but I have yet to see any footage which contains this stage and it has also been stated that the book has a message inscribed upon it reading translated of course from Japanese to English, you have no life, signed Miyamoto. But I can't read anything on the book, but then who knows? It's it's a fantastic talking piece, nonetheless. Number 5. My final easter egg once again focuses its attention on Serena Beach and features on the very first episode called the Manta Storm. Now the actual shadow like Manta that attacks the hotel and Mario is the centre of attention here as it has been questioned that this could be a reference to Stephen King's book The Shining as at the end of the book it is said the shadow giant manta ray escapes from the presidential suite amongst the fire and the smoke at the overlook and disperses into wasps. However. In this case it disperses into tiny manta rays and lots of them as you attack the larger ones. Whether this is a coincidence or not it is very intriguing and I would love to know if the designer of this level had a big thing for Stephen King and how it came to be that he designed a level based on a book if it is true which goes on to ask the question how many other levels and games that we play are based on these sorts of media? Well, whatever the answer is, one thing's for sure, I'll be back soon with another episode, as this is the Easter Egg Hunter breaking out. Mm -hmm.